Take us from unreal to real. Hold our hand and take us from ignorance, from mithya to knowledge, to truth. Take us from death to immortality. Make us with your blessings, the knower of Brahman, Brahma Vid, in this life alone. May the Brahman, may you as Brahma Rupi Mother, make this knowledge, the wisdom available to all of us so that we may understand and so that we make it real and may it be useful to our life so that while being in the garhas, in the family, in the world, and yet, Mother, with your blessing, as the Supreme Brahman, we stay with the family, with the company, with the world, with the profession, and yet be detached with the Supreme Knowledge of who we really are. Om Jaya So welcome. This is, today we thought we would take it up to have the basic understanding of the punchline that we had done previously to get back to the basics, to the fundamentals. Reminds me of a story of one of the world's top football coach, Vince Lombardi. His team got repeated world soccer gold. At the end of the day, used to have a break when they got the gold. And when they would get back to the training, Vince Lombardi would start by taking the football, the soccer ball, hold it in his hand, and he said, boys, let's get back to the basics. This is a soccer ball, a football. And the boys, he said, come on, Vince. Now, you and I need to understand to whatever we talk about, we should have three principles. One, the first thing, do with getting into the Vedanta. Number one, is it real? What we're hearing, is it real? Does it sound real? And then, the second is, do I understand it? It may be real, but you may not understand it. For example, let's say the first time when I saw, I was pretty good pilot by then, but not a fighter pilot. The first fighter plane, I was posted to youngest pilot officer and I was made to sit there for seven to eight hours a day for almost 15 days. I used to go there, sit, sweating away, 
I didn't understand anything about that play. And then slowly I began to understand. I knew it was a fighter plane. I knew what it could do, but it, I didn't understand it. So is it real? Yes, the fighter plane was real. But I didn't understand it because of the complexity of various things. So this message, what we are talking about, is it real? Do I understand it? And the third is, can I feel it is real for me? It would change my life. With these three basic principles, the ancient Rishi is to start. Now before we get on to the understanding of the Vedanta, I would like you all to, because this question is bothering many, I come to understand it, it is to bother me too. On one hand we are saying Nirguna Brahman, and the other hand we are praying to Divine Mother and Krishna and Gurus, and we are talking about Shiva and Param Brahma. There is apparently some confusion. Actually, it is not. So, in the way that we are proceeding, so let us begin to understand it. We are in the path to understand Vedanta, Advaita Vedanta, in which, in the process of the Advaita Vedanta, we know that Brahman is one, there is only one, one alone exists. And yet, we're talking about Svaguna Brahman. So you know there are four ways, Karma Yoga, what does it do? It changes, it makes us a purified soul, working unselfishly, without thinking about any benefit to us, for the welfare of people, for relatives, for friends, for parents, for husband, wife, children, for everyone, for the world. Karma Yoga. Then is Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga makes us believe in God, in the Divine Mother, in Krishna, in Allah, in whichever way we would like. As you know, Vedanta is not a religion, it is a knowledge, an awareness. The supreme knowledge, Veda is the knowledge, Anta is the end of all knowledge. And for all religious practices, and all religion actually starts off from this, whether they agree or not agree. Bhakti, you transform yourself to love for God and in which God is out there and you are out here. So there are two Dvaita called Svaguna Brahman. Two. Guna is out there and me. We are two. The God could be my mother, heavenly father, my friend, I may be the servant and God could be my Lord. You know various examples to this. This is Svaguna Brahman. The Nirguna Brahman is Brahman alone exists. Now, when we are practicing, to start with, there has to be a specific time, a specific location, a specific practice at least two times a day, morning and evening. During these days, if you can, in the afternoon 12.30 to 1 o'clock, that's the time, 12 o'clock to 12.30 is the, these are the called sandhikshans. Four sandhikshans are powerful for practicing automatically your mind settles down, absorbs into meditation. So, Brahma Mahurata, early in the morning, afternoon, 12 o'clock, 
you will notice all the animals and the birds stop calling at that time. And then, evening, sandikshan, when the sun is setting, the night is about to come. Morning, day is about to begin, night is finishing. And at night, at 12 o'clock, four sandikshans. And at these times, we sit down. Before we start with the place and the timing, we start with the prayers, remembering our Guru and God, the Divine Mother. And then we start with the exercises. They're very important. If many people sit down just like that, now what happens? Your body and the mind is not ready. So Paramahamsa Yogananda discovered these exercises. It was not there in Lairi Mahasa and not in Bhavaji talked about, not in Yuktishyogiri talk about, but it has been discovered and brought into the force by Paramahamsa Yogananda. And these exercises remove the nodules of restlessness from your body. So that when you sit down, you are settled now. Towards this process of beginning for our exercises, after the exercise, you need to uh, maintain, before we get on to the processes, a certain way of life. So remember there are actually nine of them. We call it four. The first is Viveka, discriminating unreal from real. This is not real. What does that mean? So in everything, we have intrinsic qualities and we have got borrowed qualities. Let's say a moon showing you the light, the moonlight. We love it. It's so gentle, beautiful, full moon. Lovers love it. Bhaktas love it. But it's borrowed from sun. It is not real. The light is not real. Let's take uh, hot potato. Hot potato, we love to eat it with butter and whatever else is the preparation. But notice the hot potato, it's borrowed its heat from the water. The water has borrowed its heat from the hot pan. The hot pan has borrowed its heat from the fire. But the fire has its heat intrinsic as long as the fire lasts. So as per Vedanta, this heat of the potato, the water, the pan is borrowed. In other words, it is mithya. It is not real. The Viveka realizes what is real in life, what is not real at night. And this is why we have Vivekananda who knew what is real, what is not real. We have to have that quality. Second is Vairag. Vairag is detachment actually from this materialistic world. And in other words, is attachment to this non-material world. And then are Shatta Sampatti, going over, remembering, Shama is evenness of mind, Shama Drishti, look at it evenly, Dhamma is control of senses, Uparati, opposite of Rati, Rati is going outwards for pleasure, for money, for things. We are going out, out, out. You collect it inside. Samadhana. When you collect these five senses, Viveka, Vairaga, Shama, Dhamma, Uparati, collect the power, that energy, drive it within inside of you. And that is Samadhana. Then, Titiksha. Fifth one is fortitude, holding on to it, 
dhriti, called dhriti, not giving up. There will be difficulties. No, my stomach is paining today. I don't feel like, I feel lethargic. I've eaten too much, I feel sleepy. Titiksha tells him, no, you have to sit. This is the time. And then Shraddha, having faith in what we are reading, what we are listening to, and having faith in our own self, and knowing, having faith in the Brahman is the supreme. And then, these are six, Viveka Vairaga, Shatta Sampatti, six treasures, and then last, ninth one, is Mamukshatya. Continuously thinking like the bird sitting on the egg. Like we talk about toothache, always remembering one alone before all the zeros. Zeros are all this material world outside. When you need to have these, you might say, okay, okay, okay. You should have told me earlier, I don't have any one of these qualities. So I don't think this is Vedanta is meant for me. That is not true. Every one of us has that. All we have to do is increase the quantum of those strength through these practices more and more and more. And then we shall, otherwise we will not be sitting down or listening to it of the Vedanta or wanting to know more about this. So you do have. I did not have it, but I have been guided to have it, so I do have too. You too have. So we all have it. We have to increase this, the awareness. So now, notice exercises, these nine treasures, a way of life, building it all the time, being aware. Being in the world and being separate. Being in the ocean, being a wave, but knowing I am not wave, I'm playing the role of the wave, but I am actually water. Being the samsara in the world, I am Brahman. I am Atman, Brahman. Mano buddhi ahamkar chittana na aham. I'm not mind, my body, my ahamkar, my ego, my memory. I'm not them. I'm something else. And that's the journey with which. And then you notice with this Swaguna Brahman style, we are praying to Guru, to Divine Mother, to Krishna, to Shiva, whoever you are idol. Pray, seek to give us more love, bhakti, to make us work selflessly, karma. To make us Raja Yoga, be able to do the breathing and get into the meditative state and attain the Samadhi. And then the fourth, the Jnana Yoga, in which there is no change. Bhakti Yoga changes you towards more love. Karma Yoga purifies yourself. Raja Yoga takes you to Samadhi. And Jnana Yoga makes you become aware. It doesn't change you. It just gives you an awareness. And that if you call it a change, yes, it is a change. So we are now on this force. So Swaguna Brahman. And then we realize that the entire thing, the Guru, Paramahamsi Yogananda Yukteshwar Girilari Mahase, Babaji, Krishna, Brahma, Maheshwara, Divine Mother, Swami Vivekananda, Holy Mother, Paramahansa, Ramakrishna, and the entire Gurus of the world are all one, one Brahman, alone is true. And with that, we practice, notice, Hamsa. So do not let it confuse you, which one? We are following one. But we are now making it to the combination of this and then going ahead with the Hamsa meditation. In Hamsa, Ham means I am that. Aham Brahmasmi, I am Atman Brahman. 
as you breathe in, hum and say, I am Atman Brahman. And then the Supreme Brahman, the consciousness of this universe, Sat Chit Ananda, the Divine Mother, God, is with me together. As we're breathing in, Hamsa, breathing in, Ham, I'm Atman Brahman. Supreme Consciousness, the Divine Mother, God, the Guru, Supreme Consciousness, Brahman, Sat Chit Ananda. And then as we are breathing out, this world is an appearance. And then breathing in again, Hamsa. You will find a divine awareness will awaken within us. Then don't jump into Omkar meditation. Slowly be there. You'll find you'll be in a deep state. Slowly go into the Omkar meditation. In the Omkar, listen to the Om inside. You're not uttering Om silently. You're also listening to the Omkar from within. In Hamsa, you were watching your breath, hum, and then watching. I am Atman Brahman with the breath. Satchidanand, the Divine Consciousness, Divine Mother, Kali, Krishna, whatever way you like, Shiva. I pray for Divine Mother Kali. And then, this world is not real. It appears to be real. Omkar saying, listen to the sound of Omkar is of Sat Chit Anand, the Supreme Consciousness of that sound. And then getting into, as you are breathing out, this universe appears to be real. And then going into the Kriyo, breathing in in the same way, with the same I'm breathing in. I am Atman Brahman, Satchidananda, Divine Mother, Supreme Consciousness of the Infinite Ocean. Ocean is huge, but Infinite Ocean is no limit. It's the consciousness of which I am that. And breathing out, Omkar, this world appears to be real. And then going into Nirvikalpa Samadhi practice with starting with the simple Vedantic meditation Asanga Asmeen Sat Chitananda Asmeen Asanga Asmeen alone is real I alone deep sleep state is the deepest sleep, even for the mother, the closest connection with the baby falls off the hand and totally disconnected. Whether it is the President of America, the Prime Minister of India, or the greatest of the saint, or the beggar, or the person who is fighting for his life in ICU, when they go up to the deep sleep, they are totally detached from this world. And this state coming into is the detachment in Sat Chit Ananda, existence, consciousness, Ananda, bliss. Suprabha, Jyoti Jyoti, imagine you're filled with light and then going into Dvaita Vajjita. And then concentrate only on the consciousness. Thoughts will come to bombard the mind. Don't look at the thought. Look at the consciousness which is illuminating the light. Now with this, let us get into the fundamentals of the Vedanta. Now as we all know, 
getting into the Vedanta. The Vedas, there are four Vedas. Rig Veda, Atharva Veda, Ayur Veda, Jyur Veda. So, Sama, Atharva, Ayur, Jyur Veda. And then, there are 108 plus Upanishads. Now, each Veda is divided into four. The first is Sanghita, in which there are prayers, there are songs, there are hymns. Then, goes on to Brahmana in which Brahmana tells you how to observe along with the prayers and do the Vedantic yagning, yagnas, the various processes of prayers, and then goes on to Aranyaka. How do you go on to the, to the jungle and do the practices in solitude? And the fourth is the Upanishad. In Upanishad, there are lots of 108 Upanishads, but Shankaracharya, about 1800 years ago, chose 10 Upanishads. And these 10 Upanishads are generally uh, considered to be the essence. In the Upanishad, most of them, towards the end, is the essence of the Upanishad, which is called the Vedanta. So Vedanta Nama, Upanishad of Pramana. Some of the Upanishad, the essence is in the center, but mostly it is toward the end. Take some of the names of the Upanishad Isha Upanishad, Kena Upanishad, Atharva Upanishad, Chandakya Upanishad, Vriyadaranakya Upanishad, Mandakya Upanishad, Mundakya Upanishad, Prashna Upanishad. Like that, there are 10 Upanishads have been taken. Those 10 are the ones we keep talking about as the Vedanta, essence of all knowledge. Now, in the essence of the Vedanta, we have the Upanishads, Veda and the Upanishad, and then we have Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita Krishna actually took the essence of all the Upanishads and put it into the practical life and brought it in 18 chapters and brought it for all of us. And the third is called the Brahma Sutra. This Brahma Sutra and the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads, 10 Upanishads, Shankaracharya wrote down commentary. And these are called Prakarana Granthas. So today we are going to talk about the basics of the Vedanta, the essence of the initial first understanding for revision, going back to again to the foundation. So where do we start from? The first part of the message is understanding Vedanta. Number one, the first rule, the rule of the entire Vedanta is seer and seen are different. The drashtya and drishya are different. The witness who is witnessing, the sakshi, and what is being witnessed are different. So let's start the first part of this is called Drik Drishya Viveka. Drik Drishya. Drik is the seer, Drishya is the seen. If the Viveka is the understanding and reality. Remember Viveka? What is real, what is not real. In which it starts up with first, let us see. We have our eyes. Eyes is the seer. And what I am seeing, they're different. Simple, anybody? We are revising. Seer and seeing are two. They're different from each other. I see this book. This book is different than my eye. Second rule. 
my eyes though there are two eyes are one because the organ of vision is one isn't it organ of vision is one and what i'm seeing are many so i'm seeing you i'm seeing this box i'm seeing the chair i'm seeing the divine mother's pictures and i'm seeing the red the blue the green the yellow the wooden furniture many but the organ of vision is one i remains as one this is second understanding the third understanding why the vision remains relatively unchanged the vision remains relatively unchanged but the scene keeps changing just now the scene is going to change people come in people go out people will come in tomorrow morning and will go out even at this covid 19 lock in keeps on changing so three seer and seen are different seer is one seen are many seen keeps changing seer relatively remains the same the second these are in four stages understanding vedanta from the fundamentals four stages this is first stage second stage first stage i was the seer and seen where now in the second stage i becomes the seen and mind becomes the seer and the first rule mind and the i are different no doubt mind is different i is different we have no doubts i keeps changing i is i can't see very well i'm seeing very well i need a specs i need a contact i is drooping because i am feeling sleepy mind is the seer i who is knowing it i is not realizing it somebody else is realizing i need the specs and that is the mind so first rule mind and the i are different second i keeps changing mind remains relatively same and i state of i or many mind relatively remains one the third stage now mind becomes the seer mind becomes from seer becomes the seen and something becomes the seer let us call it sakshi as per vedanta sanskrit witness the witness is seeing the mind the mind and the witness are different rule 1 rule 2 mind keeps on changing love hatred anger jealousy greed i don't understand it i do understand it the sakshi remains unchanged there are changes mind changes remains same and all these states are different sakshi remains unchanged so all three rules are satisfied these are three stages so the mind becomes the scene now and the sakshi becomes one it's called the consciousness is the chit as per vedanta this is ishvara is god which is within us now is the fourth stage in the fourth stage you realize is generally a businessman went down to himalayas very disturbed from delhi with family with money with business failures and goes and meet the maharaj and monk in the himalayas and said maharaj please help me i'm very disturbed i'm suffering the monk tells him do you know do you know that you are suffering he said yes i do know that's why i have come to you he said see you are only knower of your suffering this is stage 
you are the knower of your suffering, you are not suffering. You know it. And he was told how, as you breathe in, same what we talked about in the Vedantic breathing and the meditation. So he went to the hotel where he was staying and he practiced and he came back after five, six days and he says, Oh Maharaj, I'm so grateful. I'm so peaceful now. I'm happy. My suffering is gone. The Maharaj said, wait, <laughs> you are not peaceful. You are the knower of your peace. You are not peaceful. You are the knower of your peace. Otherwise, what will happen? You go back to Delhi and soon enough you will say, Oh, I was so peaceful in Himalaya. Now again I am back into. The moment you realize that the knower and the known are different, then you are getting connected to that knower who is the Brahman, who is the Sat, Chit. Ananda, existence, consciousness, bliss, supreme, is none other than me. I am not this body. I am not this mind. I am the knower of the body and the mind. Mind knows. So what is it? The Sakshi, through the mind, comes to realize the data from the senses. And the senses the mind and the Sakshi all put together, we witness the world. I witness the world, I experience the world with my senses, with the mind and with the consciousness showing light and to those with these thoughts, I understand the world and experience the world, love, hate, enjoy, detachment, whatever. Now, this Suffering, whether COVID or anything that you like, or enjoyment, or the detachment, in which you need to realize one thing. Remember the story of the monkey? The monkey used to come and take away the fruits from the jar, which the farmer used to, whenever he was alone, he used to go off to the field and the monkey will come down the tree and take away the fruits and the bananas from the jar. Then monkey got a message from one of the monk and he made the jar but with a much thinner neck where he had to put the bananas one by one with a finger like that and if he had to take it out he had to hold it and take it out like that. And he left them there and went away. The monkey came again and he put his hand inside and he put it and he was trying to take it out. He can't take it out. He is stuck because he's holding the banana. The farmer came back. He saw the monkey. After a lot of time to get rid of this pest, he started beating the monkey. The monkey can't run. He's holding onto the banana. And all he had to do is let go the banana. His hand will come out and he can run. But the monkey is not letting go the banana. You and I in this samsara, in the world, holding on to those banana, those desires, those things. If the monkey lets go the banana, monkey becomes the monk. EY, the tail drops off. And you become the monk, meaning you're detached. Why? in this life, like the lotus flower, in the muddy, earthy water, but it, water cannot touch it, cannot wet it, dirt cannot soil it, like the lotus. This is the message of the Vedanta that we need to understand. What is the effect? There was a great philosopher Western philosopher, spent all his life learning everything about the Western philosophy and the Eastern philosophy and the Vedanta philosophy. Very learned, millions of dollars he used to earn just by writing books and sessions. Unfortunately, he had a brain, small traumas attack. And in that 
attack, he started to lose his memory. One of our friend, dear monk, who happened to visit him and talk to him, and this Western philosopher said, I am very stressed, I'm very disturbed. I can't remember anything because of that brain attack. Now this is, understand this, there's another monk, 90 years old, staying in Arugya Bhavan in one of the ashram of Ramakrishna Mission. The same monk happened to visit him to ask some questions. He asked the same monk 90 years old. And he was a great learned person. He thought and thought and thought. And he looked at this young monk and said, I can't remember anything. Notice the same. There also the Western philosopher also couldn't remember. But he was deeply disturbed. But this senior monk, he says, same tissue, I can't remember. But the senior monk, after that, he smiled and he said, let it go. It has done its purpose. He got something and with which he realized, I am that. And the moment you start to get connected, you are empowered. You are one with the Supreme Consciousness. You become the ocean. And by becoming calm, and then you become the water, which makes the ocean, which makes the wave. The water in the ocean chose to become the wave, or the bubble of the froth, or chose to be silent and stay at the ocean. Being aware, I am the water. So yours and my journey, in whatever we do, in whatever practices, continue to remember this throughout the day. It is not like at a specific time alone. Throughout the day, whatever we do, we do with this conscious awareness. I am not the doer. It is the Supreme Brahman. Through me is the doer. Me and Brahman, there is a body, there is a mind. And as we leave our body, as we die, the Pranamaya Kosha goes away. Manamaya Kosha, Jnanamaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha, they all travel. And eventually our intention is to this these Manamaya, Gyanamaya, Vigyanamaya, Kosha will be reborn as per the Vedanta, as per the Hindu Shastra, again and again. Most religion believes in this rebirth. Buddhism believes, Jainism believes, Sikhism believes, and like that. Will be born again and again to attain the ultimate, the Anandamaya Kosha. Our journey is toward that. To with this practice, just doing the practice itself, something is going to happen. And this is the promise of our great masters. And those of you who are practicing it, obviously you are experiencing it. And that's why we are in this together. We pray to the Supreme Divinity, the Divine Mother, Param Brahma, Brahma Rupi Mother. So may this knowledge bring about the desired or prayed changes within us and make us one with the Supreme Brahman. May the divine peace shower upon all of us and give us, bless us with the Ananda. Akasha Shanti, Prithvi Shanti, Vayu Shanti, Agnaya Shanti. Jalas Pataya Shanti, Uttaradisha Shanti, Purbaya Shanti, Dakshinaya Shanti, Paschimaya Shanti, Gaur Shanti.
मनस्पत शांति मन शांति चित्त शांति गृह शांति ओ शांति 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 मे ऑल योर विशेज बी फुलफिल swiftly and quickly may all of us in this life alone attain oneness with brahman attain and become brahma with knower of brahman attain samadhi state with the grace and the blessings with the love of the divine mother krishna brahma vishnu maheshwara of our guru's blessings and the guidance Om 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 Chaitanya